So hopefully you have a method in the top of your hierarchy. So I'm greeting visitors and all people will be greeted the same right now. But I can probably do better than that. I mean, so a guest, I can say, hey, welcome. You've been here some number of times. If I have some ID that they've been here based off their IP address. Again, that's way beyond the scope of what we're trying to have happen right now. I'd have to have databases involved, all that sort of stuff. Because remember, in Java, every time you start a Java program, it doesn't know anything. It starts from scratch. It has no memory. Um, it's like Frosty the Snowman. Happy birthday. Um, at that, if you want to have persistence to it, you have to have other media. You have to have files. You have to have database. You have something to store and pull that data back in. So you can't do everything yet. You'll learn how to access those data in other ways later on. So we could leave guest empty. If we put this behavior up here for Greet and Visitor, we could leave guest empty. Um, so let's come down to customer. So for a customer, I can probably do a better job of greeting them. So the two-string method was implemented. I can put this method anywhere. Um, my preference is typically I like to put the methods that mean something above the getters and setters, but sometimes you can put them at the bottom of the class as well. It's, it's up to you. I'm going to put it at the bottom just so it's a little bit easier to find it for when you come back. I've been new stuff at the bottom. But I would normally put it you know, the, the, the methods I write in, you know, up top um, and then the getters and setters down the bottom. But that being said, the first thing I want to do is I want to make sure I'm overwriting. I have two options in NetBeans, and Eclipse has an equivalent tool if you want to go off and do this, is I can either type in the whole thing myself and do at override and go back and look at what did I define this at, okay, greet visitor, and then you know go type it in. That's, that's the sucker's bet. I mean, if you do it, that's fine. It's not, it's not really complaining. You can copy and paste as well, or you can be super fancy. And if you remember, you can right-click on here, or you can hit Alt-Insert key. Same thing. Alt-Insert just pops you straight up this menu. And now notice there's a Override Method option inside of here. So when I click on Override Method, it's going to go up and show me all of my super classes. So you can see Object, Person, it shows me everything inside of there. And I can change the behavior of whichever ones I want to, such as greet visitor. And I can say generate. And now it gave me the method greet visitor. And, I, and by default, it says super.greetVisitor. Um, guess what super.greetVisitor does? The same thing as if I didn't implement this at all. It's, it would be the default value of what you already have. But if you want to call that, you can. You don't have to call it. I can ignore it. So I can say here, system dot out dot print line you are my favorite first name I can greet him however I want to again the the exact behavior here is less important than you know the 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 fact that we're changing this here. We'll talk about your assignment here in a minute. So now, if I take this and I add this one thing inside of here, inside of my one class customer, and I go run it again, you can see my customer, it says now, you are my favorite, Tony. For guest, which is the one I created here, it says, welcome for visiting zero time. For employee, it says, you are my favorite, Bob. So why did it change it for both customer and employee? Well, that's a function of how I set up my hierarchy. If you remember, when I created my hierarchy, I didn't create it as one superclass, three subclasses. That's probably, possibly, not required, but probably how you created yours when you did your UML um, for phase one. So if I bring up here paint, let me uh, just draw a picture. I created up here was person. And I had two types of people. I had guests and I had customers. Oops. And then underneath here, a special type of customer, I had employee. So when I add a behavior up here, up top, Instead of here, I say greet person. That behavior gets inherited by everybody down below. So it gets added to guest, it gets added to customer, it gets added to employee. When I change that behavior down here in customer, 
it also changes it for employee. So if a person comes along to employee and says, I want to greet employee has the behavior, but it doesn't have an implementation for it because it was provided up here. So it starts looking up until it finds the behavior in the first spot. And then it uses this behavior. So it uses customer's behavior. If When customer didn't have it beforehand, before I implemented that, it went up and used person behavior. But now it only does that if and only if I um, call super inside of there. So I could do that. I, I, so I could, inside of here, still say super.greetVisitor. There's no reason for me to do that necessarily, unless I have a behavioral reason to do that. that I don't, it's, it's not a requirement for me to do that. But if I did that, you can see it says, Customer, welcome, for, welcome, thanks for visiting zero times. You are my favorite Tony. Then down here it says, welcome, visiting time, you are my favorite Tony. So I could do that, but again, by no means am I required to. Just... You know, from completeness sake, I can also override here the employee. I can override the override. So in the employee class, I could say um, override method. Now you see in customer, it has greet visitor. It also has greet visitor up here. Oh, no, I'm sorry, it doesn't. It just has up here. It's just the way NetBeans says it. It also exists in person class, but just says I'm going to override the, that, this one from customer. And I can change this behavior again. I can say system dot out dot print line as an employee you are our front line um let's see line comma associate we'll call it associate and then we'll just say it's formal it's a company so we'll say last name here Sorry, I get last name. There you go. Because last name was private up up top. So remember, I was trying to type in last name. You see there's no last name here. It's from customer class. And it's private in the class, customer class, so I had to call get last name. One other thing, by the way, I you, you might not have noticed it. I just want to point out another cool thing in NetBeans. When, I, when you mouse over this stuff, nothing happens. If you hold down control and mouse over, it becomes clickable. Um, I just did it subconsciously here, and I just re didn't realize, I, let me say it there, when you hold down control and click on other classes or variables inside of there or methods, you can click on them and it'll automatically navigate you to that. So kind of a cool way to be able to look through code. So anyway, so in Greet Visitor here, I'm saying as an employee, you are a frontline associate, comma, you're a frontline, comma, associate. In this case, I'll put their last name out there. So you can see, as an employee, you are a frontline associate, Jones. So for customers, it says, you're my favorite, Tony. First name, very familiar. For just random guests, thank you for visiting X a number of times. And then as for cust for employees, it says, you are a frontline associate. And then very formal last name. So I can assign whatever behavior I want to within the hierarchy by using overriding. So for your implementation, you're going to be doing much the same. You're going to have a common method up top. And then you're going to have each class underneath will have its own implementation. In your implementation, you're going to have some math that's going to be going on. You're going to be calculating uh, the total sales dollars based off of the input values that we'll receive later on. We'll do that in week four. But for one of you have number of books, for number of you have number of hours, and, you know th different things, and they'll have different formulas to find in the description of the assignment. It's in the discussion board as well as the uh, IP, and you'll implement that code. That code should be simple. It should be a simple math that's going on inside of there. Nothing too difficult. The most important part of this week is, A, creating the hierarchy of polymorphism, a method up top, and then replacements where appropriate down below, and then, B, making sure you're calling that behavior and then possibly printing it out in some way. Let me say real quick, real, real quick, let me just pull that up. You should not be doing a print line in your method. Your method should be returning something. I, I probably shouldn't even have done that here because you're going to be tempted to do that. But you have a number that's being printed out. You should be getting that number back and printing it here. Um, you know, it, so it, it, Hopefully you can hear this at the end. You can see the difference of what I had. I'm trying to keep it simple here. But you should have a method, something along the lines 
of public double or int, I don't care which type of data you use, uh, we'll just call it double here, uh, calculate stuff, return um, 10, let's just do that. So you can have a method more like this, um, you know, something that returns something. And then in your method, you're not going to have something that prints it out here because we, we need to reuse this later on. We need to use this as part of our, our application later on. So you're going to do dot get uh, nope. Uh, what did I just call it? Calculate, calculate stuff. And she's gonna do system dot out dot print line. Sorry, print line. Um, calculate value plus. Oops, plus. And then you'll be printing out something along the lines of that. And then you'll do that for each one of your. So, so each one of your. Uh, data items here. So make this one E, and then that will look better. So this is the type of thing that you'll be looking at in your application. So you'll be getting something back from your object, and you'll be doing something with it on top of it. That's much more common in the pattern. You never call an object and have it do to out that print line. That's just that's just uh, hello world nonsense when you're learning the program. You always go and get data from something and then do something with that data yourself. Because most of the time you're going to be putting on a web page, you're going to be putting on a GUI display, and all things you'll be learning over the next few classes. All right, so there's one other thing I'd like to talk about a little bit here, um, but this is the assignment here. This is the core of the assignment here. So practice this, um, work on this, and then expand out, and we can go play with the next video that you'll see here in a little bit.